environmental cell determination. In some lower organism, it is interesting phenomena that the genetics doesn't determine the sex of the organism, but the environment in which the organism lives determines the sex of the organism. It is very interesting phenomena. Now, till now, we have seen that only genetics means in the human beings, the, if it is, uh, if there are the two genes, two sex chromosomes, if uh, the sex chromosome that are XX are present, then it is female and if the chromosomes XY is present, then it is male. Likewise, in all these other organisms, it is observed that the genetics means the chromosome determines the sex of the organism. But it is a special phenomena in which the environment determines the sex of the organism. Here, the example is lower organisms. Lower organisms means the organisms uh, which are belonging to lower phyla. One of the one of the uh, peculiar example, characteristic example of this environmental sex determination is the marine eucharid worm. Marine eucharid. Worm. It is called eucharid because it belongs to phylum Annelida and class Eucheria. It is called eucharid because it belongs to class Eucheria. And phylum Annelida. From the name of this class, this worm is known as the Eucharoid worm and the name of the worm is Bonelia viridis. Bonelia viridis. In this marine Eucharoid worm, the name of the worm is Bonelia viridis. In this marine Eucharoid worm, this name, this worm is named Eucharid because it belongs to class Eucheria and the name of the organism is Bonelia viridis. In this organism, its environment in which it lives determines the sex of the organism. There are the two sexes, it is obvious that one is male and another is female. Male of this uh, Bonelia viridis is about, is ciliated. minute about 1 to 3 millimeter long the male is ciliated minute 1 to 3 millimeter long means the if you draw the diagram of the male it will look like that There are the numerous cilia present on the body of the male. These are the cilia, hair like structures. And it is very minute worm uh, about the size of the protozoa. That is 1 to 3 millimeter long. And it is the male of marine neutral worm and in the male the all the uh, body body organs are non-functional except the sex organs means all the body organs of this male neutral worm are non-functional except the sex organ in this marine neutral worm only sex organs are functional rest all other organs are non-functional only Sex organs functional. Now we come. Now we come to the female of this marine neutral worm. In contrast to male, male is about one to three millimeter long. 
the female this female of this marine nurtured worm is about it is um, 10 it is about 10 cm long and it has the bifurcated proboscis it is proboscis bifurcated proboscis it is the female here there are also some these dotted structures are present cilia like it is bifurcated proboscis proboscis and uh, it is about ten centimeter long. This structure proboscis is absent in the male, and it is only present in the female. This proboscis may be long up to one. Uh, that is one meter. The body is only 10 cm long, but proboscis may be as long as 1 meter. This male is 1 to 3 mm long, female is 10 cm long, and proboscis may attain the uh, length up to 1 meter. That is up to 1 meter. Now, this proboscis has the dual functions. It doesn't help only for the feeding of this female organism, but it helps the male organism to attach to the female organism. The male organism, the male uteroid worm is attached to the proboscis. It is uh, observed that many male uh, uteroid worms are attached to the proboscis and then they transfer to the uterus, that is the reproductive system of this female uteroid worm. First, they get attached to the proboscis, and that's why the proboscis is about one meter long. Means it performs the dual function for the attachment of this male uteroid worm and for the feeding of this female worm. Male, male uteroid worm do not have any such stru structure like proboscis. All the organs of this male are non-functional except the reproductive system. Okay, now how the Balzer was a scientist. The scientist named Balzer in 1914 he observed that how this marine uteroid worm how the sex of this marine uteroid worm is determined by the environment Balzer in 1914 he told that Balzer in 1914 uh, experimentally proved that he uh, that the female marine uteroid worm when reared in isolated manner means when it is had and larva is reared in the isolated manner in the mud it develops into the female and if the larva reared newly had larva is reared in the presence of the female then it develops into the male female what i am saying is that listen carefully the when the female when the newly hatched larva is dropped into the mud or when it is reared in absence of the female then it develops into the female newly hatched larva in absence of the female develops into the female but in the presence of the female it develops into the male that's why it is the environmental self determination means the environment now why why it is happening so the Banzer gave the explanation regarding that that the proboscis proboscis of this female when this male when this male means the undifferentiated organisms are released when this undifferentiated uh, male uteroid worm is released then it get attached to the proboscis of the female 
and the proboscis proboscis secrete some hormone like substance which is responsible for the conversion of this undifferentiated marine uterid worm into the male means the proboscis of this female secrete some hormone like substance which is responsible for the development of the undifferentiated uh, marine uterid larva into the male means this marine uterid undifferentiated marine uterid larva contains the genes both for maleness as well as femaleness it contains listen carefully that this male the, sorry this undifferentiated larva contains the genes for maleness as well as femaleness but the genes which are but these genes when it when this undifferentiated larva comes in contact with proboscis the male determining gene becomes functional and the other which are responsible for the uh, female character at the same time when it get attached to the proboscis the hormonal secretion makes the male determining genes active and at the same time female determining gene inactive so the hormonal secretion not other than anything but the hormonal secretion from the proboscis leads to the development of the undifferentiated larva into the maleness means the larva which is undifferentiated contains the genes for maleness as well as femaleness but it is the environment which is determining the sex of the organism here the male here hey, when this undifferentiated larva is dropped into the water in absence of the any female then it develops into the female means the environment which is deciding that the fate of the marine uterid undifferentiated larva that when it is dropped in absence of the female in the water then it develops into the female and when it is dropped in the presence of the female inside the water then it develops into the male it carries the genes for maleness as well as femaleness so we can sum up in the simplified diagram that we are drawing here the flow chart undifferentiated undifferentiated larva in presence means in presence of plus stand for presence in presence of female i am using this plus symbol for the presence in the presence of female it develops into the male but this undifferentiated larva in absence of female develops into male here remember the flow chart that the it is simplified flow chart that the undifferentiated larva in the presence of the female develops into the male but this undifferentiated larva in absence of the female develops into the male this marine uterid undifferentiated larva contain the genes for maleness as well as femaleness but this secretion from the proboscis the hormonal secretion from the proboscis is responsible for conversion of the uh, undifferentiated larva into the male that's it thank you for much watching my video yeah.